name is John Skies, and I am the director of media for TAPS. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our One Act Play webinar. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes, but I've got a few housekeeping items to address. <clears throat> um, so, first things first, this webinar is being recorded. You're going to receive an email tomorrow with a link to that recording that's going to be sent to the same email address you used to register for this webinar. We're also going to put that recording on our YouTube page, uh, that's taps dot, or youtube.com slash tapsbiz. Um, so you'll be able to share that with anybody else on your campus that needs to hear this information. Second, if you have questions, please use the questions feature on the GoToWebinar interface. You'll see a little drop down where it says questions and you can type your questions in there. Um, we're going to try to answer those as we go through the presentation, but if we don't get to yours right away, uh, don't worry, there's going to be a general Q&A session at the end. Um, if email is easier for you, um, Please feel free to send us an email, info at taps.biz during the webinar. We're going to keep an eye on that email uh, and we'll pass those questions on to our presenters. Um, but if we don't get to your question today or if it's just too specific to answer appropriately in this venue, please send us an email, info at taps.biz, uh, or call us at the office. I've also got a handout for you today. Um, that is your um, <clears throat> continuing education certificate. Uh, if you need to document that with your campus, uh, and you can find that in the handouts drop down menu in the GoToWebinar interface. It's also going to be in the email that you get tomorrow with a link to the recording. So if you don't get it today, don't worry about it. Um, and lastly, uh, I'm at home and my kids are running around. So if you hear that in the background, I apologize. But joining us from the office today, um, we've got TAPS Executive Director Brian Bunzelmeyer, Vina Williams, our Director of Fine Arts, Robert Huckabee, Associate Director and Director of Compliance, Steve Prudhomme, um, uh, Associate Director, and we've also got Will Dixon, who's in charge of our live broadcasts. He's helping us out on the technical side today. Um, we're going to ask you a couple of questions as we go through this presentation, uh, just to kind of give us an idea of who we're talking to. Uh, and the first one I've got for you right now. So you'll see a poll that's just dropped, popped up in front of you. What is your position uh, at your school? Uh, are you administration? Are you fine arts director, coordinator? Uh, are you the one act play director? Are you other faculty staff? Or are you not a staff member at a TAP school? If you could please submit an answer real quick. I see that already 20% of you or so have voted. I'm gonna leave this up for uh, just a few more seconds. Make sure everybody has a chance to um, to give us their input. We'll have a few more of these as we go through the webinar. And while you're answering that, we're also going to play a couple of videos for you today. Um, we are aware that on some Windows computers, um, there's a separate preference for controlling the volume of the speakers versus the volume of the videos. So if you can't hear the video, you should look for that in your GoToWebinar preferences. But again, all of that is going to be in your uh, all of that's going to be in the recording, so if you miss something, you can go back and look at that, or you can uh, reach out to me through the questions interface or the chat interface, and I will help you as best I can as we go. So about 83% of you have submitted so far. Um, looks like a few more votes are coming in. And then I am going to close this down. That slowed off. And hand it over to Brian. Welcome, and thank you for joining us here today. One Act Play, our topic, which is uh, coming up uh, rather quickly this fall. It's interesting that some of our schools have been in session for a week or more, and some won't be in session until after September uh, rolls around. So we have a wide variety of school choices this year as far as in-person, uh, brick and mortar, virtual. Uh, we have some that are doing packets. So uh, all the instruction is across the board. Uh, we're working to hopefully come up with a plan that works for everybody as we move through One Act Play. We know it's uh, a start time for you. The contest goes down the road and you got to get your class started first, but we do appreciate you taking the time to listen to us today. Again, I'm the Executive Director of TAPS, joined by Vina, Steve, and Robert. And just want to give a shout out to John for our social media. He's done a great job. He'll continue to do so with the One Act Play as well and Taps Biz, our Twitter account and our Facebook accounts along the way. Kelly Bay and Ron Smith are here in the office. They'll be available to help you along the way. They're also here to help you with your uh, rank one questions as best they can. Will, Bruce, and Nancy keep us rocking and rolling as we go forward. So again, thank you for joining us here today and thank you for considering TAPS One Act Play as a vehicle to present your uh, opportunities for your young women and young men in your care. Vina, tell us about our leadership committees. Thanks. 
Uh, we do have a one act play committee that is made up of directors at our schools that help assist in the development of our event. Um, part of that is going through what works and what doesn't work, uh, reviewing suggestions from other directors, from meetings and events. One other role that they play on the committee is mentoring our other directors. So if you are a new to TAPS teacher or a new to theater teacher and you need assistance throughout the year and you let me know, I'll pair you up with one of our committee members to kind of walk you through the system. Um, we really like to engage our directors, not just to come to the event and see you at the event, but a lot of our directors are friends and they enjoy helping each other, developing the community within TAPS with each other. Also, our leadership committee members assist with our leadership development workshops that we have at the convention. You've seen many of them there the last couple of years. We are super sad that we didn't have it this year, but I know that we have directors that have so many resources of their own that they love to share with you. Another part of our leadership committee within TAPS are our district presidents because we are on the district to state model. We do assign a district president throughout the state for your district meet and those district presidents work with me on making sure that your district is where it needs to go. And so a lot of times if you have questions throughout the year, I will refer you either to your district president or I'll send you to a committee member on the more technical theater terms if it's not just a logistical um, question. So I do wanna thank you all for those of you on the committee currently and serve as district presidents. There are a few committee spots open. So if you're interested in serving on the committee, just send an email to info at taps.biz letting me know of your expressed interest and I will um, get back with you on that. Steve, why don't you uh, talk about our governance? Yes, ma'am. And uh, before we move forward, I do want to say that the leadership that we get is, is key to making sure these uh, events go off very well. And uh, like I said, Vena does a good job, and but also all the, the help and support we get from our membership is, is incredibly important. But also what we found is and when, and in leadership is rewarding to the individual. So, so please don't hesitate, step up and, and see what you can do to be part of it. Moving on to governance, and I'll, I'll hand it over to our Director of Compliance, Mr. Robert Huckabee. All right, thank you, Steve. Welcome, everyone. Uh, if you have questions about uh, TAPS, uh, our governing documents are contained in our Constitution and bylaws. If you'll look in that blue section right under there, it tells you how to get to that resource. Just go to the TAPS homepage, taps.biz. Up in the top menu, about the third one over, you'll see is resources. That's a drop down. And about the second item on that drop down says bylaws. If you'll click on that bylaws uh, icon, uh, it will take you to a big Google Doc. It takes a few seconds to load, but when that loads, you'll have the Constitution there on the front page and then an outline in the left column that has all of our bylaws in there. Those are organized uh, by sections. We have our general bylaws. Uh, the first uh, one through 129. Then the athletic bylaws are in 130 through 197. Fine arts bylaws begin in section 198 and carry through section 261. So that's your resource. If you ever have questions, you can always reach out to our office, reach out to Vina if you need assistance. But if you're just looking on your own, uh, trying to find something, those are the, the that's the resource in the general area you go to find answers to those questions. As we move to the fine art bylaws, uh, Vina is going to visit with us about those particular sections that apply to one act play. Vina? Most of the questions that I get, especially preseason, when you're starting to pick plays and uh, figure out what you're going to do this year, um, mostly new directors or people that have only been in TAPS one act for a few years have a lot of questions that can be answered from the bylaws. So taking a look at section 250 to 255, it covers the organization of districts and states. It covers the selection standards. We do have some standards within our competition that you'll need to review for content. It talks about rehearsal and performance as far as how many minutes you have for setup and strike and your performance. Uh, we go through the props that are approved and not approved, technical elements, what we, what we provide at the state meet for the unit set pieces and what how many of each unit set piece is allowed. 
And so it's really important for you to go through those bylaws and really look at the details of what's posted there. And we also talk about the evaluation and the compliance of the rules. So be sure to hone in on those sections 250 through 255 specifically for one act play. And now, John, you got a poll question? Yes, sir. Folks, we would like to know, um, um, for our theater directors, how many years uh, have you directed theater at your school? Uh, if you're not the theater director, there's an option that says that you're not. Um, but for everybody else, we'd like to know, uh, how long have you been doing this? All right, I'm going to close that off and back to the office. Thank you, John. Um, and. And again, we do urge you to go back and read the bylaws. If you're new, you obviously need to read the bylaws, but if you've been here a while, you need to go back. Uh, some of us like Robert and I have been here you know, 30 years or so in TAPS. We can remember a whole lot of rules. We just can't remember which ones are in effect now or which ones changed. And so our memories kind of fade in there a little bit. So make sure that you go through there. There's some changes uh, that happen every year. So read the bylaws every year. And I'm going to start off with student eligibility and talk a little bit about the uh, the basics of uh, what we have. Not 19 prior to September 1st, full-time student initially enrolled in, four, in ninth grade, not more than four years ago, and a high school student in good standing for all student eligibility. But we have a few things that are changed this coming year, and, and Robert's going to talk about that. All right, thank you, Steve. Those uh, what Steve just mentioned. Those are our core eligibility. Uh, rules that are found in our constitution those don't change from year to year but this year because of uh, of covid and the uh, changes that we know that are occurring at our member schools with regard to how education is being delivered uh, the board over the summer took a look at what we always have defined as a full-time day student we made some modifications to that which allow uh, for students taking classes virtually or online uh, to be a part of their eligibility as well so the approved education models that exist for this year, you can go to section 82 and read those. But to summarize, if you're in class in person, the, what we typically call the old classic brick and mortar, uh, that's always been available, uh, taking that, that four required classes to be a full-time day student. We are also now allowing the alternative education, whether that's virtual or some type of PACES program or some combination of, of in-person and alternative educational models. So that's new for this year, this year only at the present time. Uh, but uh, if you have any questions about that, reach out to us. There is some flexibility there in the eligibility that's allowed because of the virtual aspect that exists in many of our schools. Next, we're gonna uh, look at health and safety. One of the continuing goals of TAPS is to provide a healthy and safe environment for all of our students. The National Federation of High Schools has created NFHS Learn that provides a few courses out there, even for uh, our theater arts and in our fine arts. So we're going to jump over real quick to nfhslearn.com. And uh, if you go there and then you click on the Performing Arts tab at the bottom, it has opportunities there for you, courses that would have uh, some kind of a relationship to what we're doing. Uh, the other thing is we're going to jump over, I'm going to talk about it in a minute, we're, we'll jump on over to nfhs.org and we'll recount those in a minute. This is going to be the aerosol study and I'm just going to be, briefly tell you what that is in a minute, but nfhs.org is a great opportunity. You can go up there and click on uh, activities, etc. and it does have opportunities for fine arts as well. So nfhs.org, NFHS Learn, we'll speak to them in just a minute. We'll jump back to the presentation real quick for me. So when we talk about the one act play, why do I have to have an emergency action plan? Well, it happened multiple times in my opportunity as an administrator uh, at a school where we had severe storms. We had other opportunities that we did need our emergency action plan to know what to do and where to go. So make sure you dealt with yours. Student health awareness is a great one because it talks about performance enhancing drugs or appearance enhancing drugs. And, and that's big in our culture today as well as social media. First aid, uh, when we were constructing sets, first aid came in handy several times, so make sure you know how to stop the lead or other opportunity. Uh, concussion, again, we had that happen more than once on a one-act play stage, and we've had that happen at competition 
Um, and then sudden cardiac arrest, I hope we never have to have that, but it also goes back through to help there. So health and safety is important on the stage, uh, around the stage, backstage, and traveling. So make sure you have an emergency action plan for each. The Aristotle study, it goes to their uh, National Federation commissioned a study as COVID came on uh, at the onset has continued to go forward. Uh, they've come up with multiple suggestions through that study of how to perform at, at your best and how to perform safely. Uh, I think it's in keeping with most of the local restrictions that we have. In some cases, it's probably more than the local restrictions we have by the local Department of Health and Human Services. So the aerosol study is what we've based some of our recommendations that we'll get to later, and that's found at nfhs.org. So let's move on forward and talk about communication opportunities, Nina. It is key for our process that we communicate with you and you communicate with us. And part of that is how we give you information and how you can send information back to us. So our taps.biz is our main website, taps.biz. Uh, it has a main web page. We also have a fine arts web page, and then we have individual activities page. Will is gonna take us to taps.biz and I'll show you how to find the one act pages. So on taps.biz, there's a black menu bar that has our major uh, menu items. But if we were to click on fine arts, that will take us to our main fine arts page. On this main fine arts page, it shows our fine arts entry fees so that you can prepare for your year uh, prior to entry fees being due. There's a director's corner, which will highlight our latest news brief that we have sent per category of participation. And then under Performing Arts is our One Act uh, page list there. Um, if you'll go ahead and click on One Act Play. <clears throat> One Act is structured with uh, districts as well as our championship event. But on this page, you'll see the important dates. If you scroll down, there will be a link for uh, championship information. And on the right, there is our blog list of uh, basically all the emails that get sent out are also copied here. The red toolbar there will have a direct link to our rules and actually if you click it from here it'll take you directly to that section 250. Uh, there's also the <clears throat> district link and that district link is will be updated throughout the season uh, as we start school. It will have each of the individual districts. Currently they're posted as those who turned in participation last year or over the summer who said that they were participating and we will update those districts. So if you'll go ahead and click on district information, it'll kind of just show the overview of your districts and then you can just choose one of those districts to click on. Um, this district page will basically have your information of what schools you're participating with. Eventually when I get a judge assigned to this district, it'll have the judge's bio, It'll have the date and location. And then in the end, this is where we'll post the results for the performance ranks in the cast and crew. So this is your district page. Your district presidents will be sending me that information as we make those plans. So me sending you information is through the website. Um, and then we have communication back to us. Well, if you'll go back to the slides. <clears throat> We will communicate with you through the website, but we will also need to send out notifications of updates and emails and things. And so we will be getting all our email addresses from rank one. So you'll need to be sure to be up to date with the correct email on that. And we'll discuss rank one in a little more detail here in a minute. Also that director's corner post will have the latest and greatest as well as the activity sidebar. But if you need to contact us, the best way to do that is to send an email to info at taps.biz. That will actually go to our ticket system where if you have an email and it has questions regarding eligibility or your script or uh, you're just asking a question about costumes, when we get those emails at info at taps.biz, we can assign multiple people to it. So if there's a compliance question, I can connect Robert into that email as well so that we can both answer your questions without the email getting lost in the email zone. So using info at taps.biz is your best communication of getting the correct person to respond to your emails. Rank one is our database and so we are going to hear about using that. I know that they've been uh, adding features 
daily for our fine arts. So Steve, why don't you tell us more about Rank One? Yes, the fine arts have been really the main focus of Rank One's uh, projects going in since the uh, last few months. And it's important to get all the directors into Rank One properly. Um, and again, we've already said it, the communication comes from there. It hadn't changed in the last however many years. If we get the right email address, we'll be able to get the email to you. So make sure you double check all that. And if you have questions, there's a help desk with Rank One and they can help with a lot of things, but also uh, the people in the office can help and they're getting better with this with Rhonda and Kelly uh, in terms of helping you through the Rank One system or the other folks in the office will help. If you'll call, reach out to us, uh, we'll make sure you'll be taken care of. Robert's gonna talk a little bit about the entries you're gonna need to make with the kids and the staff. All right, thank you, Steve. Uh, first thing you need to do is get yourself in there if you're not already. So in rank one, you need to make sure all coaches, directors, assistant directors, uh, anybody that has a role uh, in uh, in the world of fine arts, they need to be in rank one so that we can communicate with you. So your program directors need to be in there, any assistant program directors. And then once you're in there, you go in, you set up your profile, you complete all that information. Once all that's in, then everybody who's in rank one at a staff level, they can go in they can complete their uh, professional acknowledgement of rules and do all their scope certification so they're good to go. All your students need to be in rank one as well. Uh, if they were at your school last year, uh, everybody from last year that moved up a grade was promoted in the rank one system. Uh, they all have a profile that's in there. Uh, the, their parents need to go in. They either need to create a new profile if they're a new student or update their existing profile each year. That's where they go in and answer all their questions, complete their acknowledgement of rules, and make sure that they have all their forms completed. All the medical information is completed in there, in the history, uh, the medical history, uh, when they secured their physical, that's uploaded into rank one as well. And then at your school level, you might have some school-based forms, some permission forms or something like that, that are required as well. That's a part of the entire process of rank one um, that, uh, um, you you need all of your students in there and then the next thing you'll do once everybody's in there you'll build your roster for all of your particular activities in this case one act play you'll go in there you'll create your team uh, you'll build that roster you'll pull those students over from your student database at your school and you'll notice as you pull them over and put them on that roster they'll either be highlighted in red or green Red means they're missing some forms or information that needs to be in rank one for them to be eligible. You can click on that student at your level and it'll tell you what forms are missing. Uh, when all those forms are completed, they transition from red to green. And then when they're green, they've completed everything from an eligibility perspective with regard to uh, TAPS and, and what they need to do to be eligible. None of your students need to, uh, need to be competing in any competition until they're green and all of their information is complete. Brian? Just kind of an update as well. We uh, were transferring last year to rank one as our database and it will continue this year as our database. Uh, as with anything new, we, we had a few uh, struggles. We had some bumps and some valleys and we're moving through. If you need help, I highly encourage you to reach out to the TAPS office, info at taps.biz or at our phone number, 254-947-9268. That's on the web. Kelly and Rhonda here in the office can help walk you through, especially if you think there's a problem. I'll reiterate what we've said in all of our webinars so far. Don't just assume that the system is wrong. So if you have a question and something comes up or it's a little hard to operate, please let us know and additionally if it is hard to operate what would make it easier as we go forward so rank one is our database we appreciate them working with us and moving us forward John you had another poll ready for us yes sir folks we would like to know um, how many years has your school participated in the taps one act play I'm gonna launch that right now so is this your first year one to two years three to five or five to nine please let us know real quick all right, I'm going to shut this down and hand it back to Brian in the office. Right now we're going to talk about some resources uh, that have been put together uh, to kind of help make it more convenient and more organized uh, for our fine arts directors and our, our one-act play directors. And Vina, you're going to talk about that a little bit. So part of equip, uh, maximizing your program is equipping yourself with what you need to have a great program. So over the next couple of months, we'll be, throughout the year even, we'll be updating 
resources that are good for you. Right now, we have some things in your toolkit that are needed to get your season started. Uh, there are There's a checklist that kind of goes through what you as a TAPS teacher needs to do for our TAPS event. We have uh, other resources such as the rehearsal checklist. What's expected of you when you show up at your rehearsal, what's going to be asked for, what, what information you're gonna need to have with you, the process in which things happen there. There's also a contest manager's to-do list. Now, although you might not be a contest manager, you really should take a look at what the ex is expected of those contest managers so that you know what to expect uh, from them when you're at the event. So go ahead and read through those documents, even if you might not think it pertains to you. If it's on this website, then it's important to you. So reading through those to-do lists and the checklist will help you stay in the right scope of the season. Also, we have some professional organizations that are just there to help you develop your programs within your school, not just for one act play and TAPS competition, but to help develop your theater department. Uh, the uh, TETA has great resources. They offer a lot of workshops and even conventions that you can attend and other opportunities for your students. TTAO, TAL, is where we get most of our adjudicators. Those are, they are qualified, they are familiar with the one act um, competition setting. And so I know that we have some TAPS teachers that are also certified through uh, to TAL for adjudication as well as contest managing. Also in your director's toolkit on our website, there are a link for hotel resources. And then also we'll be linking the NFHS Learn course uh, website there so that you can directly get to that. There are a lot of Learn courses that you could take that don't just have to do with safety. There's copyright and compliance, that's a really good one. Many of you use music in your plays. We do have limits on that, but if you watch that video, it will help you understand when use is acceptable in your theater or when it's infringement, infringement on copyright laws. So we do have a sponsor, Kelly Ditta, who will be talking about the hotels. I know that some of our theater teachers are responsible for getting those hotels when you're traveling and you don't have an uh, athletic secretary or athletic department that's handling those for you. So let's hear from our sponsor, Kelly. TAPS family, I'm Kelly Ditto with Red Pen Incentives and Red Pen Travel. We are absolutely thrilled to be the appointed convention manager, sponsorship manager for some new partners, as well as the hotel management partner. Unfortunately, we missed seeing you all at the convention this year. We tried really hard to pull it off, but it just wasn't in the cards. But please mark your calendar for next June 7 through 9. It's going to be a fantastic convention, and we will make up for missing this one. I want to talk to you briefly today about hotel blocks. So I know this is a bit of a burden for many of you guys, trying to figure out how to move your team, get the best, most efficient um, hotel rates, as well as logistics of just coordinating it as we move the TAPS events all over the state. I am thrilled to announce that I have a fantastic new back-end technology partner that's going to be helping Red Pen Travel be even more efficient um, with our hotel bookings. We will also be using our collective purchasing power to get better rates for you all. Um, to quickly walk you through the simple platform of how you can either use our group blocks to get the best rates that we've collectively negotiated, or I have a dedicated team standing by to help you with your individual group blocks, figuring out the best rate and making sure that logistically it's an easy process to do. So as we move into this fall, Goodness, who knows what it's going to look like. But with TAPS and all of our partners, we are here to try to maneuver it together with you to make it as smooth as possible. Looking forward to working with you all. Have a great day. We thank Kelly Ditta for all her work and putting together uh, Red Pen Travel through the Red Pen Incentives Program. And again, saves you money, saves you time. Um, and again, if something gets canceled at the last second, the, uh, the company will be able to help protect you a little bit on that. And so again, you're not gonna be on your own. Uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Brian, talk about important dates. But before we do that, uh, we have a question. Uh, Brian, do one act play students need physicals for this year? 
one act play students do not need a physical if all they're participating is fine arts or one act play if they're an athlete of course they would need that physical if they're in the band they need that physical for one act play in particular they're not required however part of the student profile that each student fills out every year will be a medical history form and that medical history form does need to be completed by each student that's the one where they talk about do i have a food allergy etc so you may have a separate form that your school uses but we also require that to be done in rank one so quick answer is physicals no medical history yes and we're going to move on down to important dates so the two big dates that we're looking at right now are september 1st and that's when the participation form is due so of course each year uh, i know that our districts are getting a little nervous about who is and who's not performing and who's going to be with us and who's not and this is an extraordinary year in which uh, there are going to be a lot of schools i think they're on the fence of comp competing or not competing so september 1st is when we'll begin to know who's going to be participating in one act play and who's not we'll also then be able to look back at the divisions and the districts and make sure that we get those the best we can if you're going to have international students that are new to your school that is not a citizen of the united states please make sure you get those international students forms in you remind your students to do that that's also in the student profile when they click hey i'm not a citizen of the united states it pops up and they have to complete that form script submission september 15th is the deadline there so hopefully you can get on it and get close to the script if not then uh, let dina know uh, info info at taps.biz we can help walk you through if that's going to be a struggle and then your district uh, entry uh, forms and uh, whatever are going to be a week before for the most part for each uh, district will set their own so we'll set the districts and the divisions after September 1st in case there's any changes the district executive meeting uh, all the directors can participate should participate and then we'll go forward on that one last thing as we get ready to go forward is we know that there are a lot of folks on the fence this year uh, we would highly encourage, if you think you're going to participate in one-act play, please mark it on your participation form. There's no fees due at that at this time for one-act play. Uh, you're simply indicating that your thought is that we're still going to participate. Those fees will be due in October, so it gives you a little time to, to make up your mind. But we highly encourage on the participation form to help us out, to help you out by adding those in. John, another poll, I do believe. Yes, sir. All right, folks, let me get this launched real quick. Uh, how is your school planning to offer uh, theater this fall uh, in September and October? Uh, online only, in person only, or a combination? This particular question is helpful to us because I do have some committee members that are willing to share some online teaching tools for online theater, as well as uh, just re resources on how you can continue to engage your students if you're in a mixed setting where they're only coming to school once a week in person and doing the rest online. And so answering this will give me a better indication of how we can get you resources to help you out this, this first part of the school year. All right, those submissions have slowed down a little bit. I'm gonna close this poll and hand it back to the office. Okay. Thank you, John. And now we're moving on to the competition structure, and Vina's going to go over that uh, and what we have looking forward for this new school year. Vina? As Brian mentioned in that participation form, we usually send out an intent to participate over the summer. That was a Google form that I think we got about 40 of the 70 of you to actually submit over the summer. Uh, so with that, even those of you that are thinking I might not participate or I might, there, there is an option of I'm not sure yet. So as long as I get that form turned in, uh, usually in the summer, we could start making plans. So at this point, it's more important for you to get that participation form that's through your membership contract with your administrator. So many of those forms are filled out by your head admin or your athletic director so be sure to make sure you're contacting the right person to make sure that your participation in one act is solid yes we are coming uh, put us on the list and like i said those those who are not sure go ahead and add it i am keeping those that have told me they're on the fence or they're kind of waiting until school starts to see what kind of students they get or how big their theater class is going to be I'm, I've asked the district presidents to keep you all looped in instead of just dropping you off the email chain so that you're aware of the ongoing plans and procedures that are happening uh, in real time. So without us just marking you off and counting you, discounting you for the rest of the year, we do want to keep you informed so that you know how things are evolving. 
So be sure to get that participation form in on September 1st. And like we said, as always, there are some times where we have to move, combine a district or redistrict a few schools so that the districts are fairly even. We do use a district, a division and uh, district and state model for one act play. Usually we have anywhere from 60 to 70 schools participate. It works out great when they're 64 um, but because we have the, uh, we try to have less than eight schools per district. And then from those uh, eight schools, we take the top two to go to the state that division needs. So your district meet will have to happen prior to October 21st, uh, 27th. That is the last date of district. So some of you have already asked if we can have uh, the date on the 27th and, and you can. I just need results by the end of that day, which puts us just about a week before state, gives us just enough days to prepare for the state meet. Your district will actually determine the location and uh, the date. So your district meeting, those conversations have happened for some of you. Uh, and some of you are just kind of waiting until school starts, which, which is okay. At the district meet, it is run just like a state meet where you perform, you have a tech time, and then you perform. Your performance is judged, and the judge also gives an immediate oral critique based on what they just saw. And like I said, the top two advance to the state meet. For state, we have had eight schools per division that advance to the state meet. So the state dates are on the calendar. Uh, they are also judged by a panel of three judges, and then oral critiques are given immediately after your performance. We do give awards for participation of th this event based on your performance. So at district, the top three schools receive a plaque, and then there are cast and crew awards given for the, the students, best actress and best actor, and then all-star cast and crew and honorable mention cast. The same awards are given at state, and at state we actually have a fourth place plaque as well that's given. So um, some of the schools have really enjoyed, you know, just the whole district process. Those of you that are thinking, I'm not sure I want to do this, or I'm not sure we're ready for competition. We do plays, but we've never done one act. Because we have this district state model, every school gets to perform. So go to a district meet, try it out. Uh, we do have some mentor teachers that have allowed other theater teachers that are kind of curious to come shadow them uh, for the day, kind of see what it's like to talk through the process and um, just show how educational the whole process of competition theater uh, can be. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, part of your, uh, Brian mentioned part of the important dates is the uh, script submission form. So we do require you to turn in your script and these do have to be published scripts. I know that some questions this past week have been, you know, we haven't allowed internet scripts. Do we allow internet scripts now? Uh, so that question is really internet published scripts versus a published printed script that the publisher is giving you an e-copy of are two different things. So as long as it's a legit legit publisher and we've got the performance rights and the script that's part of that script submission form so i can just look at the list of all the publishers to make sure there are no questions and you haven't gotten too deep into preparing so this as soon as you know your script go ahead and send that in so that i can start looking over those um, the script approval form that is due September 15th is not just telling me what your play is and who the publisher is to make sure it's uh, within the, the rules of our competition, but it is also an approval from your school administration certifying that they know what the script is, they've read the script, and it fits within the standards of your school as well as the standards of our TAPS contest. So that script submission form is a certified from your administration saying that this is an approved script for participation in TAPS. Some of you have questions sometimes about, well, I see that there are some content guidelines in TAPS and there are a few things in my play that I'm not quite sure about. I don't know if I should cut it 
or should modify it? Do I even have permission to modify it? Most of the modifications needed need to go through your publisher and getting in contact with them. I need to change this, or I need to switch this and see if it could be played by a different person, or I don't have three guys, I only have four, so can I change this to a, 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 a female role? Things like that do have to get approved by the publisher, but sometimes you have some content in there and you're not quite sure about it. Well, we Jim Rambo does some script review for us, and if you're concerned about the content and what might need to be cut, or how to cut it, uh, you could send your script in with a $50 fee that goes to Jim so that he can read the play, kind of go through, see if it's in line with our standards, see what things have to be cut or what's suggested, and, um, and that can help you decide if you want to do a play or not. Because of the time that it takes for him to read the script and review, he does want those by September 1st so that you have time to pick another play if necessary. So those scripts, if you're submitting your skip for review, that's due September 1st, and we do require a copy of the script with your cuttings marked so that we can tell what you plan to use and what you don't plan to use in that. And like I said, this is optional. It is, you do not have to send this in, but if you want some assistance with getting your script review, um, that is available to you. Now I've been meeting with some um, publishers this summer and just kind of talking about performance rights and what's, what's available and what's not available. Um, just as a reminder, sufficient scripts have to be purchased for your production and this includes the e-scripts. So some of you are meeting online for the first few weeks of school and the publisher has said, well, here's an e-script you have purchased 15 copies, you may distribute to 15 of your members via email. And so they will send you an e-script so that you can go ahead and get the script in the hands of your students. Production royalties have to be paid. Sometimes it's, you've got a um, free royalty. Uh, you, you found a, a script that doesn't have any royalties and, and that's fantastic. But there, those, are, those are exceptions. Production royalties do need to be paid, uh, even if it's a not for profit, not for profit performance. If it's just a dress rehearsal with the audience, um, there's if you're doing a live performance. Sometimes uh, there, you're doing a dress rehearsal for the school, and um, they want you to also pay for those performances. So it's important for you to find out exactly from your publisher which type of license is used. Basically, the answer is anytime there's an audience and you're performing the play in, in its entirety or even a portion, you have to have per permission to do that by paying those fees. Some of them vary. Some of them are pretty cheap. Some of them are not so cheap. Um, this year, with having all the COVID last year and theaters having to cancel and schools having to cancel, the publishers have reached out to their playwrights and most of them are offering streaming performances, um, the, the live stream performance or a virtual performance or even a recorded performance. Uh, so when you're talking with your publisher about what type of license is used, be sure you specifically ask them, which one do you need? Um, some of them will require two. For instance, if you're performing it live and you've got a live audience, but you're also streaming it, you actually will, you might need two licenses for that performance. If you're just uh, doing a live stream and there's nobody in the audience, then you might just need the live stream performance. So be sure that you are clear with what you're doing on your campus, as well as uh, what your plans are to determine what types of licenses you'll need. The, the publishers that I've talked to this semester, uh, some of them play scripts, has partnered with Broadway On Demand, so there, there's actually already a streaming partner for them, where if you decide to live stream your performance because your school is not letting outside people come into your school, they do have that uh, Broadway On Demand partnership with play scripts. Stage Partners and Pioneer Drama, they have worked with me on making sure that we can get the right streaming licenses for your performances if you have chosen to go with uh, their publishing companies. 
Um, I'm still working on some. There are a few that uh, I've contacted and just haven't come up with exactly what's available. That's Dramatist and Concord Theatricals. And um, so those, those are the ones that have said, we want you to still perform. We want you to keep theater alive in your schools. We will do whatever we can to help you make that happen. So part of um, picking your play might be determined on what is available. Um, there's also some, some plays being written specifically for social distancing, where they know that your schools aren't allowing you to be within a certain number of feet or um, the virtual plays. You know, there's so many options to keep theater alive in your school. And so be sure to check out those, especially the place group, Stage Partners and Pioneer, because they have been working with us um, this year. Now, a lot of you have been kind of concerned about what is this going to look like? How is this going to affect my kids? How is this going to affect my department? And I just want you to know that the judges I've talked to over the summer, the publishers, everybody wants this to happen. They want you to continue to build your programs and continue to have your students learn and grow from theater. Uh, we have a message from Jim Rambo, one of our favorite um, theater guys. He's a retired theater professor who remains active as an adjudicator for the UIL for TAPS and the American College of Theater Festivals. Uh, so Jim has a message to share with you guys. Well, I am Jim Rambo. I'm a retired theater professor and uh, I have been the coordinator for the adjudicators for uh, TAPS for, uh, I believe we're going on our sixth or seventh year. I think it's extremely important for us to remember that this is all about the students. What can the students learn? And if they win, that's great. And if they don't win, they go back and they work uh, hard. And hopefully that this will be the only virtual or partially virtual uh, year that we will experience. The, the contest, again, stresses uh, educational, and that means that uh, we are there to teach our students. And in theater, of course, we are teaching them uh, typically in vocal energy and body energy and interpretation of script, but we are also learning about uh, our world through the play that, uh, that the director has chosen. So I think uh, in any way that if we can lay down uh, the idea that uh, more than winning this year, it's about performing. We want everyone to uh, participate. We want everyone to uh, understand that we will all be adaptable. That includes the critic judges. We are all going to be flexible, but we're going to face this challenge. If you remember the things that Abraham went through uh, in what, you know, he believed that God was giving him, but he had to die to the vision, die to his expectations of that vision that God gave him before God was able to do a work. And I think that that's, that's really what it's about. Yes, we have experienced the death of the vision, some plays that were not performed last year, but we continued through this situation, we continued to educate and to teach. We want to be learning as teachers and also learning environments for our students because each school will have different guidelines. They're under individual school guidelines that it's first of all important for, uh, for the critic judge, the adjudicator, whether we see it live or we see it uh, recorded to be able to know what those guidelines were. So we're going to face that challenge then and say, all right, if our students can only uh, zoom their performance, then we're going to look at, uh, you know, how to be able to uh, portray that character basically through their eyes, their mouth, their ears, their facial responses all, all over their use of their neck, because it's going to be very much neck up. So we're not going to be very close, but if we are giving clear choices, uh, despite what those are, and that means even if uh, the school requires a mask during the Zoom performance, 
then let's begin to uh, imagine outside the box. What can we do? Uh, for example, the uh, the plastic uh, helmet type of uh, mask that is popular in medical environments might be an alternative, or the mouth cut out uh, in such a way with plastic around it so that we can see the actor's mouth. The key here is if we know those things. So my suggestion is that each school write down what their guidelines were not their disadvantages. I'm not looking at it that way. We're saying, uh, what are the guidelines that have been given? And then for the director to say, okay, this is then what I uh, have attempted to do. For example, uh, the play choice that reflects being a little further away uh, from, from each other, uh, or to show the art of suggestion uh, if those people are uh, needing to be closer to each other. That might be another alternative. That's going to be a creative alternative and a creative challenge given the guidelines that are there. But I believe it's very possible and I believe it's very, uh, very doable in the light of performing to uh, adjudicators. Nobody's done COVID pandemic kind of evaluations. Uh, last year with UIL, I, uh, you know, I did two of my six contests in UIL adjudicating. Uh, we were cut off in zone and district and nobody else performed. Everybody is new. Not only are your students new to this and the directors are new to this, but also the adjudicators are new to this. Again, a little bit different criteria, but I believe that it's very possible to be able to show uh, what, uh, what you want to be shown. We're going to only evaluate what you have given to us uh, on that particular day of performance, be it a recorded performance uh, or an adjudicated performance uh, via you know, a recording. So I think that's very possible. So this is all a new normal for everyone concerned. I think the key to this is that uh, just like casting directors, uh, we adjudicators are, are not there to uh, make a student feel poorly. We're wanting to, to accent the things that they did correctly. Yes, we know there are going to be limitations. Uh, yes, there's going to be differences of interpretation. One act play, drama in particular, uh, film, television, uh, movies, all of that uh, is very subjective and we evaluate subjectively. It, it is not a science. It is a very strong and viable art form. I would rather be here than saying we're not doing it at all. But I believe that TAPS is up for the challenge, and I believe that, uh, that we can move forward and education can be retained and in perhaps finding new ways to look outside the box. Thank Jim for, for those words, uh, very uplifting. Uh, and it's important to be able to hear somebody who, who talks about what we can do and what direction we're gonna go. And, and again, the, the room for pity is, is not for us, it's to move forward and, and take, it, take things as they are. And so I need to have Jim talk to all our webinars we've been having, cause, but again, uh, again, very uplifting and we do thank him for everything that he does for TAPS. Okay, Brian. I like to consider myself to be a lifelong learner and uh, when we first uh, investigated one act play as a possibility for taps jim rambo was the first name that came to mind met with him many hours in waco texas as we developed our first plans and our first thoughts at that time our one act play committee worked hard to come up with our plans uh, to to uphold our mission of taps which is to provide opportunities for the students in our schools to participate and compete so this may not be the year that your school is going to compete. The, the COVID situation and your own uh, local restrictions may be too harsh. It may be too big a burden, too high a hill to climb. Uh, but our opportunity here is, is what we're looking forward to is to provide all the opportunities we can, especially for our fine arts students as they move forward, just like we are with our athletic students. So 
Uh, we are continuing forward with the opportunity to have an in-person competition at both the district and the state level. It's the opportunity that we have and we know best, so we're going to start there. If COVID forces us to do a virtual opportunity, both live or taped, of course, if of those two, we would prefer live first and taped second, just to make sure it was level of playing field as we can have is in play. And then there's also a Zoom play opportunity. Vina can speak on that a little bit more uh, in the future here. One thing I just want to go back and reiterate, I think we've all thought the same thing, is no two people, no two schools, no two locations are going to be the same with COVID. So if you're in the Valley and you're under the strictest orders and you can't start again until September the 28th, then perhaps a Zoom play is the best opportunity you're going to have. Uh, it's an opportunity as a director to try to find those opportunities for your students if you wish to compete. And again, this is an opportunity that we're trying to provide. This is an opportunity that TAPS has looked at. We, we value our one act play. We value this as a competition. Therefore, we're trying to offer it in a, in a most uh, confusing time. Uh, and whether you have to wear a mask or don't have to wear a mask or whether you're going to be mic'd or not mic'd, those are all questions that as a district and as a state uh, leaders will look at. But right now, if you want to participate, we're definitely looking at moving forward. So again, thank you to all of those who have been around when I play with us for a while. Uh, you've helped us to create this opportunity. It's going to be a tough year to move it forward, but uh, we know that with your opportunities there at your local schools and with your dedication to the craft, we'll have an opportunity to get through this. All right. Thank you, Brian. Uh, moving on to some uh, questions that everybody has. Uh, what, uh, what would be my performance options? Uh, Brian and Vina have mentioned some things that we've been thinking about, things we're planning on right now. Obviously, those plans could change. But looking at some of the performance options, what kind of COVID protocols would be in place or would come into play when we're looking at our, our practices and rehearsals? We do at our school on a daily basis when we move to our district competition and then to our state competition. Uh, on Friday, August the 7th, the TAPS office released some protocols uh, for TAPS activities. This includes athletic and fine art activities. Uh, you can find that document if you haven't seen it already. It's about an 18 page document. It has some very good guidelines and some protocols for some minimum standards uh, that are in place uh, with regard to if you are hosting a TAPS competition uh, or if you are participating and attending a TAPS activity, there are some minimum standards and guidelines for expectations uh, that you should have with regard to what's required and what's allowed at those competitions. You can find those by going to the TAPS uh, website, go to the home page, right there in the very middle, there's a return to play fall 2020 link. You click on that, that takes you to another page that has a lot of buttons on there with different things, different webinars, things we've done, different communication and information that we have disseminated recently. Uh, right there in the middle, you'll see a blue button. It's called 2020 Return to Action Protocols. If you click on that, that will take you to that document. Uh, we're not going to go into the details here, but please visit that document. Please look through those protocols. Those are some minimum standards that as we sit here today with the things that we see that are in place, uh, that we have put in place for our schools when they interact with each other in some type of competition. Uh, we say it in there many times, what you do at your school with regard to your classes, your, your, your courses, your practices, your rehearsals, uh, all those things that you would do at the local school level, those are local school control. That's up to your school administration to develop your own protocols for the interaction with your students, what's required, what's not. So look to that document. If you have questions about it, you can always reach out to our office here, info at taps.biz. Looking at some specific restrictions uh, that will come into play as we move into our district competitions. Obviously, where you're hosting your particular competition, there will be some local or campus restrictions that might be in place that everybody will need to know. So, Vina, visit with our listeners a little bit about how you're going to help them walk through those district meetings and preparing for those competitions. Sure. <clears throat> We do know that different parts of the states have those different mandates based on county. Some of your districts are cross county, and so you're having to deal with uh, different protocols depending on where your school is located and where your district meet is going to happen. Uh, one thing that uh, I 
am willing to assist with is to have a district meeting with you individually by district so that all the district directors can just get on a webinar, a live call where all of us can brainstorm together. We could talk about the restrictions within your own school and the protocols put in place for your campus as well as your city and your county. Uh, I have been meeting with different district presidents already talking about what the struggles are and how we're going to overcome those struggles this semester. So one, the district meeting that we can, you know, host together and talk through those so that maybe we find some things that will work for your district. Uh, some of the things that might need to happen is that you find a venue that is not at the school that you posted it at for the last eight years. Uh, some of the campuses aren't willing to bring other school groups onto their school campus because they're, they've closed their campus to all visitors. So some of the districts are looking at public venues that are not attached to a school, local theaters. Uh, within that, we are looking at possibly having uh, a revised schedule to allow less schools coming in at the same time. Uh, perhaps a couple of schools will do their tech and performance and then another couple of schools will come in, something like that. We've talked about spreading out the time a little bit to allow for sanitation in between groups. All these different things are things that we can talk about. I definitely don't want you discounting and saying, well, we can't do this because we have to wear masks or we can't perform because we can't be within six feet of each other or we can't perform because we can't leave campus or whatever those situations are. I want to know what those are, but it, but it is more helpful to me to be able to talk to them in a district, as a district, rather than 60 individual schools. Another thing that I, Jim and I both meet with the judges throughout the semester and we talk with them individually, but we will be having some judge meetings uh, per, per district groupings so that we can make sure that everybody's on the same page as, as to the, like Jim said, what, what requirements are put on you as a teacher and then how we can make sure our judges are seeing past that and really focusing on the good theater that's being taught. Um, so with your district meet and with our state meet, there are going to be some protocols that we put in place, you know, such as your kids have to wear a mask when they're not performing, if they're, you know, going from one place to the other. Um, there's cost involved in it with making sure you've got the staff at the host place to be able to sanitize and put in those safety protocols to help keep our kids safe wherever they happen to be going. So, like I said, I will be working with your district presidents to come up with those dates and times that we can meet together as a district and to help make your district meet the best meet that it can be. We are still planning on going to Kerrville for our state event. Uh, Brian has some ideas as far as uh, we have a team ticketing. Brian, can you talk about the ticketing and possibly the four day school format? The bottom line is we're still planning for an in-person competition. Uh, we, we almost have to plan for that along with all of our other possibilities, but we're planning for an opportunity. Though Kerrville's Callow Theater is closed to the public for right now, they have expressed a great interest. Nick and the staff down there, especially Nick being the guy that's on, on site while we're there, they're encouraged, Amy and them, are, they're excited that we can come back if we can. Uh, we will probably have limited or no fan attendance if we can go back to the Callow. Uh, we're seriously looking at the uh, four schools per day so you can load in, do your uh, rehearsal, eat lunch, and then come back and do your performance. And then we would have to change the award presentation later, uh, dressing spaces as well. So I just want to take a moment to uh, encourage you. Uh, it's easy to say what I can't do and uh, to let uh, other situations dictate how you operate. It's harder to say what can I do. Uh, as a staff and as a board, the executive board has directed us to prepare uh, to offer all competitions and all championships, uh, not necessarily looking the way they did before, but having some opportunity for the students to compete, for our schools to compete, who feel like they can move forward. 
Uh, again, I cannot stress enough, if this goes against your local guidelines, if it goes against uh, what you feel or your abilities to control the situation or, or in, a, in a healthy, safe manner, then this year's uh, one-act play just may not be right for your school. Uh, we look to uh, provide a competition for all those who feel like we can move forward. Uh, the Callow Theater does have the ability to uh, show, uh, to drop a screen and to show uh, perhaps a virtual opportunity for if a school can't make it or if, if multiple schools can't make it. Uh, we'll definitely have to look at that as an opportunity. Not going to commit one way or the other right now because we just don't know what this COVID-19 virus is going to do. Uh, it changes on a daily basis. Right now we're operating on Governor Abbott. Uh, and some of his, how many participants can be in, whether it's a 50% or a 25% occupancy. Uh, and by that time, we don't know what the situation is going to occur. So uh, for those that, that want to look, the virtual is definitely going to be an option. The Zoom play would definitely be an option. It would be a different category. Again, I, I hesitate to tell you who's in what classification or division or, or what district right now. We just don't know who's going to feel like they can participate or not. So we encourage you, email us, info, info at taps.biz. We encourage you to uh, give us a phone call here, get us on the phone. I'm really encouraged with uh, Vina uh, and Steve being able to jump on a Zoom call with the districts to help you work through the possibilities to see what's going to be possible uh, and, and what we can and cannot allow. Uh, would it be the same being in person and being at your own uh, stage with your own folks? It's not going to be exactly identical, but I think uh, Mr. Rambo stated it well. We're going to do the best we can to adjudicate uh, and get those that are deserving the awards that they deserve. So we're looking forward to being able to provide this contest. Again, uh, we're looking forward to doing it the best we can in the best situation we can. Uh, I think we have uh, Vina. I think we have a message from the uh, Callow Theater. Hi, my name is Amy Goodyear. I am. Hi, my name is the Kathleen C. Callow City Center for the Performing Arts, which includes the Callow Theater, uh, which is very excited to be hosting once again the TAPS One Act Play competition. We have hosted this competition uh, several years in the past, and it is always a highlight of the year for our staff. Uh, and for uh, for our community to be able to have this kind of event and to encourage educational theater, which is very important uh, to our mission. So we are once again excited to have uh, the TAPS group on our property. We know that this year is going to be different, <laughs> and we, uh, we want to assure you that as a theater, we are going to do everything we can to uh, keep your students and teachers and parents uh, and any other members that may be coming to uh, be a part of this process safe. Um, we are going to uh, have every uh, appropriate protocol available at our theater. We are going to support the processes of, of your schools. And we are going to uh, make sure that our staff is ready to, uh, to handle these situations carefully, safely, uh, with uh, the health of your students, uh, number one in our priority. But we're also going to have a great time. We also want to provide a great experience for your kiddos. Um, we know uh, most of us have been doing theater for many, many years. Uh, many of us, since we were that age, we remember the importance of these events and how much they mean to the kids uh, and how much they mean to the schools. And so we want to provide the best experience we can, uh, make it fun, make it educational, uh, have them learn something from each other, but also make sure that they are safe. And so that will definitely be a priority for us. If you've been to the Cala Theater before, uh, you know that we have um, state-of-the-art sound and lighting equipment. Um, we are very familiar with TAPS and UIL procedures, the rules, the differences between them. Um, our staff is... Uh, very equipped to handle your uh, helping you with your setups and your takedowns, and um, we will uh, we will just uh, be there with everything that you need. We're experienced in this process, and uh, we're going to do what we can to, to make it a good experience, but most importantly, a safe experience. So we look forward to having you. Uh, we will see as things change, as we all know, day to day, everything is changing. So um, we are, as I'm sure you are, all keeping our fingers crossed that we can proceed as normal in November. That is certainly what we are planning on, and uh, we will roll with the punches just as you will, and we will, uh, we will get there together. As, a, as, you, as you know, the theater is a family, and we consider you part of that. You, you are part of the Callow Theater family, and we look forward to, uh, to being with you and working with you and just having a great time. So thanks a lot. See you in November. 
thank Amy for, for that and, and all our good partners and, and the people at the Calo Theater. And John, you have another poll question. Yes, sir. All right, folks. Uh, do you plan to participate in TAPS One Act play this season? Okay, I'm going to shut this down and hand it back to Steve and the office. Okay, Brian, take us home. Looking back over the questions, the one thing that I cannot re uh, repeat enough is that we're looking for opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. It's not going to be the same if we're not all sitting in the same room. It's not going to be the same if some are in mask or some are not in mask. Uh, some are going to have an opportunity to rehearse uh, on a, a live stage and some are going to have to do it in the auditorium. That's always been the same. Some are actually in the gymnasium or the cafeteria when they rehearse. And the first time they see a one at play set is when they show up for district or state. So again, we have obstacles to overcome. We're all in this together. I'm excited uh, about having the district planning meetings. I think that will be a great opportunity for uh, us to walk through with you and the district uh, directors on exactly what it's gonna look like. Uh, and then being able to have the uh, judging component, hopefully Jim can join us a little bit there as well, to help understand that there is going to be discretion and opportunity given from the judges as well. Uh, again, if you're wearing a mask, it's hard to see whether you're smiling or and to see all the opportunities of facial expression, but I know that our experienced judges will do the best they can as we go forward. So again, this is a year of change. This is a year of opportunity. This is a year for us to figure out something new uh, instead of the same old thing. The same old thing's been good, uh, but this year we're going to be a little different as we move forward. So again, if you are looking to participate, we look forward to seeing that on your, uh, your participation form so that we can begin making our uh, opportunities for how many districts and how many divisions. Uh, we know that not everyone's going to be able to go with us this year, uh, but we hope for those that do that we can give you a good ride to the finish. So again, thank you for joining us here today. We highly encourage you to uh, email us at info at taps.biz. You've got the phone number, 254-947-9268. Uh, drop us a call, drop us an email. Let us help walk through the problems that you may or may not be having. Uh, we know that some of you are going to be able to perform just like any other year. The restrictions in your local county are less. And uh, for those of you, we'll all be grateful. I think anybody would be glad right now. Uh, we continue to monitor the CDC, the National Federation of High School, local, state, and national authorities. Uh, one of those may put a stop to where we're going, but until they say stop, we're going to continue moving forward to provide a one act play championship this year for TAPS. John, lead us out of here with the final concluding thoughts. Thank you, Brian, and thank you, everybody in the office for your help today. Folks, that's it for our webinar. Again, you're going to receive an email tomorrow with a link to the recording. Um, <clears throat> If you have a question, think of one later, or you uh, it, it wasn't answered uh, today, please send us an email, like Brian said, info at taps.biz, or call us at the office. This recording is going to be made available on our YouTube channel, so you can uh, freely share that with anybody on your campus who needs to hear this information. Also, uh, the remarks from Jim and from Amy, we're going to include those in an episode of Taps Talk, our podcast. Uh, that'll be out uh, at the end of this week or early next week. Um, we'll have two. We'll have one for music and one for one act play. Um, that those remarks might be something that your students or your parents want to hear, uh, especially when Jim's talking about adjudication, but that'll be available for you. You can find that um, links to subscribe to that on our website, uh, taps.biz slash talk, uh, or you can just search Taps Talk on any podcast platform or Spotify and you will see us there. We got some other episodes on cheer and on um, esports. If you're interested in that, or if you know somebody on your campus who is, there's some good content from our uh, our member schools there. Also, don't forget to follow us, our uh, One Act Play Twitter account. That's at TAPSOAP. Um, we put all of our One Act Play related content on there, kind of keep it specific to you guys. If you've got a, an account for your theater department or for your One Act Play group, uh, follow us, tag us in things. We like to retweet things. We like to see what you guys are up to. But other than that, again, if you have any other questions, please send us an email, info at taps.biz. That handout with your uh, um, certificate of Continuing Education is available right now if you want to click on that and download it. Uh, but again, it's also going to be included in the email that you get tomorrow. Uh, and if you need anything else, folks, please let us know and enjoy the rest of your day.